the, and of course, uh, the distinguished lecturer of today, Professor Ololade Adeduro Enikomei. And with a round of applause, this is his first inaugural lecture. The acting vice chancellor of our, of our university, Professor Olushola Babakundekende, please sustain the applause for him. With the way you welcome me, it's crystal clear that you're happy to see him here. Thank you so much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, we shall take the national anthem, then thereafter, Funab anthem. For uh, Up and ten. Let's be seated, please. Thank you so much. Because of time factor, let me say, principal officers, yes, seated. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, permit me to quickly introduce eminent personalities on this side of the auditorium. First and foremost, the acting vice chancellor of this university, Professor Olushola Babatunde Kende. You are most welcome, sir. Deputy vice chancellor, academics, Professor Kristen Obiora Ikiobi. You are most welcome. The registrar, Dr. Bola Akin Adekola. You are welcome, sir. 
the university bossa, Mr. Chukwike Ezekiazo. You are most welcome, sir. Of course, the university librarian, Professor Fentola Onifade. The Dean, College of Plant Science and Crop uh, Production Co plant, Professor Jonathan Jeremiah Achugu. You are most welcome, sir. The Chairman, Committee of Deans and Directors, CODAD, Professor Adebayo Koyum Akinloye. You are most welcome, sir. The Ed Department of Crop Protection, CPT, Dr. Clement Goyega for Labi. You are most welcome, sir. And with a round of applause, the 71st inaugural lecturer, a professor of plant pathology, Professor Ololade Adeduru Enipu Mei. Your joy will never cease in Jesus' name. At this juncture, I want to invite the acting vice chancellor, Professor Olushola Babatude Kainde for the former citation of the inaugural lecture. Please, let's sustain the applause for him. He made sure he's here. He came all the way from Abuja to be here this afternoon. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the com commitment. Thanks for the sacrifice, sir. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Siwen Ikeubi, all other principal officers of the university, please permit me to stand on already established protocols. May I respectfully invite the 71st inaugural lecturer of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, Professor Ololade Adeduru Enikume, to please step forward beside me here. Once again, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Registrar, the Bursa, the University Librarian, the Inaugural Lecturer, Professor Lola Diade Duru Enikumen, Dean, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Deans of other colleges and the Postgraduate School, Directors of Institutes and Academic Centers, Head Department of Crop Protection, members of the University Senate, all academic and non-teaching staff, members of the Enikume family, all special guests and friends of the university. And at this juncture, please permit me to specially welcome our revered heroes in this university. By that, I specially welcome my mentor, Professor Uluru Timi, Timothy Uluru Timitayo, former Dean, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, former Deputy Vice Chancellor, Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. You are welcome, sir. I also welcome Professor Tony Aruwolo, former Dean, College of Environmental Resources Management, former Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic. You are welcome. Please also join me to welcome Professor Steve Olaulua Afolami former Dean Postgraduate School, former Vice Chancellor Augustine University with his amiable wife, Professor Mrs. Caroline Afolami, you are welcome, ma. Um, I also welcome into our midst, we'll still have time for some of that, but at least permit me to welcome the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration at the University of Agriculture, Umudike. You are welcome, ma. Please permit me. She's joining us this afternoon. Um, all special guests and friends of the university, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, great funabites, great funabites. 
You're welcome. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the 71st edition in the series of inaugural lectures of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta. Today's inaugural lecture is the first I'm presiding over as the acting vice chancellor of this university. The inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Lolade Adeduru Enikume, was born in Okitipupa, Undo State, on February 5, 1966, to the royal family of late Oba Robert Adeduru Enikume and Olori Grace Aduke Enikume. Professor Enikume started his educational background at St. Paul's Primary School, Okitipupa, in 1972 and transferred to Mayflower Junior School in Kenya in 1975, where he completed his primary education in 1978. He attended Stellamaris College, Okitipupa, between 1978 and 1982, at Igodon Lisa Okumo High School, Okitipupa, in 1983 for his secondary education. In January 1984, Professor Enikome proceeded to Bendel State University, now Ambrose Ali University, Ekoma, from where he obtained a bachelor's degree in botany with second class honors, upper division in 1987. He attended the University of Ibadan for the master's degree in agricultural biology with specialization in plant pathology. And a program he completed as the best graduating MSc student in the Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry in September, 1990. Professor Enikume registered immediately for the PhD program in plant pathology in January 1991 under the supervision of Emeritus Professor Tunde Ikotun and completed the program in May 1995. His work experience. Professor Enikume started his career as a lecturer during the National Youth Service Corps in 1988 when he was deployed on special request back to the department from where he graduated. He was involved in teaching and conduct of practical classes for pre-degree students. After the NYSC program, he had a stint as a secondary school teacher at Ofedekwe Comprehensive High School, Okitekupa, between August 1988 and September 1989. Professor Enikome joined the service of University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, on October 24, 1994, as an assistant lecturer, a move facilitated by the legendary Professor T. O. Tayo. He steadily rose through the ranks and attained the rank of Professor of Plant Pathology on October 1, 2008. Professor Enukome has been involved in teaching, research, and community service of the university. He has been teaching and of course, he still does till date, undergraduate and postgraduate students in his department. He has supervised over 80 undergraduate students and has graduated five PhD, 11 master's degree students till date. A total of four master's and four PhD students are currently under his supervision as major supervisor. Professor Enikome has served as co-supervisor to over 25 postgraduate students across different departments in the university. Professor Enikome's research interest is plant disease management using plant products and ecosystem management practices. This perhaps is the basis of the three types about which the audience is gathered this afternoon. Professor Enikome has published over 50 articles in local and international journals, and is a reviewer to many local and international journal outlets. He has also attended conferences and training workshops in Nigeria and other countries, such as Israel, United States of America, United Kingdom, and Kenya. He has also served as editor-in-chief of the Nigerian Journal of Plant Protection, the official journal of the Society, Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, NSPP. Professor Enikume has served as external examiner of postgraduate examination in many universities in Nigeria, and has also served as assessor for professorial appointments in universities in Nigeria and Ghana. 
Professor Nikome has sat in various departmental, college, senate, and council committees in the university. He has also served in the following administrative capacities. Acting Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor Development, Chairman, Committee of Deans and Directors, Dean, Postgraduate School, Deputy Dean, College of Plant Science and Crop Production, Acting Head, Department of Crop Protection, and Chairperson, Asu Yunab. In these various responsibilities, Professor Nikome has strived to uphold the virtues of integrity, truth, fairness, and justice, which he holds there. Membership of professional bodies. Professor Nikome is fellow of the Nigerian Society for Plant Protection and a member of the following professional bodies. Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, International Society of Organic Agricultural Research, ISOFA, American Phytopathological Society, Society for Ecological Restoration, Agricultural Society of Nigeria, and Organic Agricultural Professionals in Tertiary Institutions in Nigeria. In conclusion, Professor Ololade Adeduro Enekome is happily married to Mrs. Idowu Olujoke Enekome, and they are blessed with three children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to invite Professor Ololade Adeduro Enekome, a professor of plant pathology and fellow Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, to present his inaugural lecture titled Tending the Inaudible, the Management of Plant Afflictions with the Endowments of Nature. Thank you for your attention and God bless you all. The acting vice chancellor. Deputy vice chancellor academic. The registrar, the bursa, the university librarian, dean college of plant science and crop production, deans of other colleges, student affairs, and the postgraduate school directors of institutes and academic centers, head, Department of Crop Protection, members of the University Senate, all academic and notice staff, all special guests and friends of the university, members of my family and friends, distinguished fellows and members of the Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, gentlemen of the press, Ladies and gentlemen, greatest Funabites. I stand before you this afternoon with gratitude to God to present my inaugural lecture titled Tending the Inaudible, the Management of Plant Afflictions with the Endowments of Nature. I wish to start by thanking the immediate past Vice Chancellor of this university. Professor F.K. Salako for approving my nomination to present this inaugural lecture. I also want to thank the Acting Vice Chancellor for facilitating that this event takes place today. This inaugural lecture is the first in the Department of Crop Protection. the 14th in the College of Plant Science and Crop Production, 
and the 71st in the series of inaugural lectures of this great university. The entire discourse is about plant diseases. The concept of disease is common to both plants and animals. However, when a plant is sick, two main features become obvious. The first is that they are inaudible. It is either they do not try, or when they do, we do not hear. And the second is that they are immobile. They cannot relocate away from the point of threat or move around to seek help. And this is why issues of plant health is of importance to humanity because our livelihood depends on them. In nature, diseases in plants are caused by the following biotic agents. It could be a, a bacteria, a virus, a nematode, or a fungi. But for the purpose of this inaugural lecture, the emphasis is on diseases of plants caused by fungi. A fungi is actually a plant, but a plant that has a distinction. It does not have capacity to produce its own food through photosynthesis. And by that, it is dependent on other substrates or other living agents for its sustenance. To understand the nature of a fungus, I'll permit, I would seek your permission to take you back home, wherein we have something like this, a loaf of bread that we would say is moldy, but the children will want to consume. The elderly ones will say it's moldy because of the green patches on them. The green patches are the molds, they are the fungus. The fungus will invade the bread, digest the bread, and take in the, the nutrients from the bread at the detriment of the bread. We will recall that in our homes, if we have this bread on our table for three days, we will lose the entire bread. And that is exactly what will happen to a living plant if it comes under the ravaging influence of a fungus. However, it is important to emphasize that it is not every fungus that causes disease. A fungus that has capacity to cause a disease is called a fungal pathogen. While the study of plant diseases generally is called plant pathology. What are the ways by which we feel the impact of fungal pathogens in nature? It includes the fact that an entire farmland could be lost to the ravaging influence of a plant pathogen. The second is the fact that having to spend extra money to protect the plant will be introducing a higher cost of production. And sometimes when we consume food products that are invaded by the fungal pathogen, we will inadvertently be consuming byproducts that are sometimes carcinogenic. But to bring this closer home, I want us to look at this. This tuba of yam is the likes of the kind that a diligent housewife will have bought from the market and taken home to feed the family with. And imagine a working class woman that has woken up by 6 a.m. in the morning, rushing to prepare breakfast for the kids that must resume at 7.30. And she decides to slice this tuba of yam and this is what she finds. You can imagine the plight of that household that morning. This is, the, this is the much a fungal pathogen can do. The brown patches you are seeing on that tuba of yam that had looked good on the surface is what a fungal pathogen can do. And so, if this, fung if this tuba of yam had also been our crop plant on the field, the implications will be that losses will attend our investments and the adverse effect can only be imagined by us. This is the reason why efforts are being made. An entire research career is also devoted to investigating the lot of the plant that comes under the influence of a ravaging plant pathogen. How do plants get infected? How do plants get diseased? For a disease condition in plants to take place, three conditions must be in synergy. There must be a sync between three factors. The pathogen must be able to cause disease, in technical terms, we say it must be virulent. 
the environment must be conducive and the host plant must be susceptible. What we do in the enterprise of crop protection is to investigate any of these three factors enough to understand how to make it not to cooperate with the other two. For example, the loaf of bread we had, we showed if we had, if one had brought that loaf of bread and kept it in the refrigerator, you recall that it won't go moldy as fast as if we left it on the table. What you had actually done is to tamper with the environment. You make it such that it won't be congenial for the pathogen to thrive. And sometimes when you hear people talk about breeding resistant crops, like we were told at the 78th inaugural lecture, it is to work on the host plant to make it unavailable to be invaded by the host pathogen or the, the plant pathogen. This is the process. So when efforts are made to protect plants, it is all about working on the pathogen or working on the environment or working on the host plant to ensure that as long there's no synergy of the three, diseases cannot take place. In nature, how do plants express their infirmities? It will be recalled that one of the features of a sick plant is that it cannot speak, that I dare to say that possibly they are speaking and crying and mankind has not developed capacity to hear them. And that has created a situation where we have to find other sources of finding out what is wrong with them. And one of them is to use visual indices, which we call symptoms to find, to show that a plant is sick. We can see on the slides, a plantain rot, the foliar disease of system, fusarium wilt, anthracnose of mango. These are common sites in our farms, in our stores, and in the marketplaces. A number of things require attention here. Number one, despite the fact that these sites are common to us, the plants are crying. It is not normal for them. If mankind had developed capacity to hear them, we wouldn't be comfortable having them around us. And secondly, we shouldn't be comfortable with these situations because we have seen them day to day. And the third aspect of it is this. Before a disease will become discernible like this, it has progressed substantially. When a disease is noticed in forms of the symptoms, it means that pathogen had entered into the plant, had invaded the tissues of the plant, and what we are seeing are the outcomes of the invasion. A consequence of that is this. This fusarium wheat symptom will be mistaken as water stress by an average person, but this is not water stress. This is a disease caused by a fungus. And if a disease gets to this stage, it is irreversible. But the truth is that if this plant could be heard crying out at the first point of entry of the pathogen to call the attention of the likes of the Dogra lecturer, possibly the situation would not be like this. And that is the reason why, along with my colleagues, we have devoted an entire career life to investigating the interaction between the plant pathogen and the crops of interest to us. And I would dare confess that in this, I have taken sides. I took sides with the plants against the plant pathogen. I took sides to study the plant pathogen to know enough of it to be able to work against it. This is important because we need to keep having food on our table. And if you allow the plant pathogen to run its full course, we'll lose all that we have been working for. Active vitamin Solosa, with this background, I will seek your permission to allow me to just give a summary of my research contributions to plant disease management. For the purpose of this inaugural lecture, I have summarized my activity profile over these years into three main subheads. The first is the identification of plant pathogens and diseases of crop plants. This is a series of research we conducted to identify the pathogens that cause diseases of specific crops. The background to this study is that in most cases, there are plants in some parts of the country 
that the diseases of those plants are not even known to us. So when you want to investigate what kind of diseases are likely to befall this plant, you need to do a clear investigation as to knowing which pathogen is the cause of that disease. We did a series of studies on that. The profile we'll present later. And the second is the endowments of nature in plant disease management. And of course, the third is human capacity development in plant disease management. So I invite us, Lossa. I invite us, Lossa. Permit me to seek to drink water. Can I be helped with a cup of water? Thank you very much, sir. The first aspect of my contribution to knowledge, which is identification of plant pathogens and disease of crop plants, includes the fact that in 1991, the federal government of Nigeria in bid to increase the production of wheat, the raw material for making flour, taxed states in the South to investigate the possibility of producing wheat in the southern part of Nigeria as a rain-fed crop. We got involved in this, and we came out with the findings that wheat cultivation in southwest Nigeria is not feasible, primarily because of the preponderance of two major diseases, the sclerotium rot caused by sclerotium rhopsi and the fusarium head caused by fusarium graminearum. These diseases are accentuated by the fact that by, there is a lot of moisture, both in the soil and in the atmosphere, in red fern crop production for wheat. And a wheat head that is molded is just unfit even at inception. So we contributed that to the general national discourse and concluded that it was not feasible. One other major outcome of our investigation into the identification of disease of crop plants is in respect of the sesame crop, sesamum indicum. This is an oil seed crop that has great export potentials for this country. As at 1997, there was no record of the diseases that befall this crop in this part of the country, I mean, Southwest Nigeria. And we undertook to investigate because it was obvious that as a late season crop, it was feasible and possible to grow system in this part of the country. But we needed to really ascertain the range of diseases that are likely to befall the plant, plant. And we came out with the findings that two major diseases are of essence. The sarcospora leaf spot caused by sarcospora sesami and the ortonaria leaf blight caused by ortonaria sesami. These two diseases have capacity to reduce the productivity of this crop if it is not managed properly. And because our effort was a novel effort, there were no assessment scales for assessing this disease. And in plant pathology, your methodology must be reproducible. And we discovered that there was a need to also standardize the, the process and the methodology for assessing diseases of system. We succeeded in doing that. And, and came up with an assessment scale that was reported and accepted, and in fact has been modified and used for other oil seed crops. The second leg of my contributions to knowledge is what I call the endowments of nature in plant disease management. Endowment of nature means deriv derivatives of nature in the form of products that are derivable from the plant or outcomes that are derivable from manipulating the crop environment because these are things given to us by nature. Under plant products, we investigated the use of ash in the control of plant diseases. We investigated the use of plant extracts in the control of plant diseases. And we also explored the possibility of the use of sawdust as tools for crop disease management. And we found out that there were positive outcomes. Some of them presented outcomes that were encouraging, 
and show that they could be used in the standardized forms. And the second aspect of endowment of nature is intercropping, which I had referred to as manipulating the crop environment. Intercropping is the system of planting two or more crops in the same area, either simultaneously or in a, in, in a, in a synchronic form that one tends to fall into the growth pattern of the other. And we also found out that positive results came out of that enterprise. We found out that if you investigated, if you intercrop, you get results. And we came to realize that, okay, if plant products will give positive outcomes, intercropping will give better outcomes, then it is likely that the combination of the two will give a better outcome. And that is the basis for the third leg of our endowments of nature, which is integration of plant extracts and intercropping in this plant disease management. And expectedly, the outcome was better than either of them. The details of some of the summaries includes the following. For ash, we came out in our studies with this fact that the ash obtained from the leaf of Delonis regia, the flame of the forest plant, or the ash of the castor oil plant, or the ash of the water hyacinth, Econia crassipis. If any of these ash types is used to dress a seed, it will reduce the infection of the seed by seed borne fungal pathogens. Meaning that all a farmer needs to do, rather than go buying synthetic seed dressing chemicals, get these ash types and mix your seed with them in the recommended dosages and plant. You are sure to have a better outcome than if you didn't add anything at all. And it's not likely to cost you as much working with ash than working with a synthetic chemical. We went further and came out with further outcomes in respect of the value of ash. You, it will be recalled that one of the diseases that made it impossible to grow wheat in Southwest Nigeria is the preponderance of diseases caused by sclerotium rhopsi which is a particular disease that has a wide host range. But we found out that the ash of neem, the leaf of neem, the ash of bitter leaf, the ash of mango leaf, if it is applied to a soil that is infested by this fungus, it will reduce the capacity of this fungus to cause disease. The literal implication is that if an individual suspects that his soil area has this fungal pathogen, get any of these ash types, apply it to the soil at the point of planting your seeds, and your seeds will escape infection. In respect of the value of plant extracts, we also investigated several plant extracts and the outcome that we found positive includes the fact that as a director in DICA, the, the extract from the neem leaf or the extract from Osimum gratissimum, what we call a in Yoruba, or Chromolera, Chromolena odorata. Permit me to call it what we, they call it in my hometown. They call it Akintola. There is also the wild sunflower, Titonia diversifolia, and of course, Aspilia africana. The extract of any of these plants, if it is used to spray a field of sesam, any of them will reduce the incidence and severity of the two major diseases of sesam reported earlier. And this table shows the quantitative estimates of what I just reported. In the table, it will be seen that the yellow coloring accruable to Titonia diversifolia, the fungal disease percentage is 4.5. That means that a plot that was sprayed with Titonia diversifolia, fungal incidence was 4.5. The, the green coloring shows a plot in which there was no spray at all the incidence of disease was 10.3. So this using titonia as titonia diversifolia extract reduced disease incidence from 10 to four. And in terms of the yield, 
yield accruable from the plot spread with titonium uh, extract was 155, 155 kilograms per hectare as against 86 kilograms per hectare for a spread that was not spread at all. So it means if a farmer cannot afford chemical, he still has an alternative. Any of these extracts will come handy. And the process of producing this extract is common. The methods we know get a known weight of the leaf material, macerate in a known volume of water, sift through a muslin cord, and you are set to go. We believe these are endowments of nature. These are provisions of nature for us to be able to work with in order to also escape the ravaging influence of fungal pathogens. One other significant outcome of our effort at exploiting the potentials of nature in plant extracts is that we found out that if fresh tomato fruits were just harvested and were sold in the extract of Arconia cordifolia, the common name is Christmas bush, or Cassia alata, the extract of any of these two plants, if it is used to wash the tomato fruits and left in it for about one hour, when the tomato fruits are left on the shelf, they will stay longer than if they were not treated at all. The study showed that tomato fruits that were even washed in water got rotting faster than the ones that were treated like it means that a farmer is not lost even if he doesn't have a refrigerator it's just a matter of going to get these specific specifications and applying them on his crops the third leg of the the, the aspects of plant products is sawdust sawdust is becoming a menace in our environment now and what we do is to incinerate these things and accentuate global warming we have discovered from our preliminary studies that the sawdust of cola netida, the cola plant, the sawdust of Melina arborea, and the sawdust of Anogesius leucapus have potentials to reduce the incidence and rate of rot of plants that are stored with them. Specifically, the preliminary observations show that if an individual procures the sweet potato, fresh free sweet potato, and gets a box and put the potato tubers in it and puts any of this sawdust in it to cover up, the tubers will stay longer and not rot than if they were not kept in anything at all. We believe, again, the sawdust is an endowment of nature. It's a plant part that had become useful for us, and all it requires is to get these things and use them. Now, permit me, active vital cell loss, to indicate that the specific, the specifications as to those, to this dosage and measurements for all I have expressed is in the full text of inaugural lecture and in the papers that are also published in respect of these observations. The other leg of endowments of nature is intercropping. Like I said, intercropping is a system of planting two or more crops within the same area, either simultaneously or in a, in a synchronous form that one dovetails into the life of the other. An example is what we have on the screen. What we have on the screen is the outcome of an experiment that was conducted to investigate the effect of row arrangements in an intercrop on incident and severity of disease of system. And we found out that the one-to-one -one arrangement, that this is one-to-one -one arrangement, that is one row of system to one row of maize to one row of system, as against two of system to one of maize or two of maize to two of system. We found out that a one-to-one -one row arrangement is effective in reducing the incidence and severity of disease. The table here shows that the yellow coloring indicates what the outcome of disease, severity, the disease incidence in a plot of one to one. It was 16.5 as against the red coloration, 75.5 in a, in a plot that is not intercropped. 
meaning that intercropping system with maize in a one-to-one -one arrangement will reduce disease incidence from 75 to 16. And that trend is also applicable even for the number of leaves that dropped within a timeline. When we got these observations, we were excited about it because it's accentuated our belief that there are options in nature. But the question arose, and the question is that in a soil crop, there are specified populations of system. If you are intercropping system with maize, if you use the same population, you are likely to end up with overcrowding, which has a counter effect on what you are seeking to adopt. So we went into a series of studies to investigate the ideal population density of system that will be intercropped with maize to get the best outcome in terms of disease management. And the outcome shows that to intercrop system with maize in a one-to-one -one arrangement with a view to get ample disease control, 133,333 plants per hectare of system is ideal. And the table shows that with that plant population, disease incidence was reduced to 15.6 as against 95 in a soil crop meaning that the one-to-one -one arrangement is effective when the population of system is 133,333 plants per hectare. At this point, again, we were excited, but we were also challenged by our previous observations that the endowments of nature has more than what we have exploited. And that was the point at which we felt plant extracts have been known to work. If you spread the field with extract of Titania diversifolia, you reduce disease incidence. If you intercrop with maize, one-to-one -one arrangement, you get a reduction. So if you do both of them on the same plot, you should get a better outcome. And we went into a series of studies in that regard. And the outcome showed that if you spray a system intercrop, a system plot intercrop with maize in one-to-one -one arrangement, if you spray with 8% weight per volume of Titonia diversifolia extract, disease incidence will be reduced as in the yellow coloring on the first column to 18.8 .8 as against 62.4 even in the intercrop. Meaning that there is a complementary outcome from this. As exciting as this was to us, we were also open, and open enough to allow ourselves to face the reality that there is still a question still unanswered. And what is the question? The question is that, okay, this is working, but an average farmer needs to be told how many times he should spray the plant extract to get maximum outcome. And of course, we dared the courage to go into a series of research in this regard. And the outcome showed that a three spray regime of Titonia diversifolia, diversifolia extract at 7.5, not even 8% now, will give an outcome that is comparable to what a synthetic fungicide will give. At this point of the study, we introduce a synthetic fungicide to give a comparative basis. And the table shows that disease incidence from a field spread three times with 7.5% the titonia diversifolia extract was 3.9 as against 6.6 .6 of carbendazine. They are not significantly different. So it means a farmer will not be losing anything if he adopts this method as against buying a synthetic fungicide. There are so many of these other outcomes in the main text of the inaugural lecture. Time will not permit me to go through all of them. But the summary is this. There is so much in nature. And if we take time to exploit them, we are likely to position ourselves properly against the fungal pathogen that is working hard to ensure that there are no two foods on our table. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. I have chosen to include a third leg to my contributions to knowledge in the area of what I call my human capacity development in plant disease management. I consider the, the fact that, that I have had pri the privilege of supervising and graduating five PhD students in plant pathology, 11 master's degree students is 
an ample contribution to our effort to ensure that the fungal pathogen does not win. And I also want to report that currently I have four PhD students on the roll and four MAGRI students still working for these degrees. And I've had the privilege of being part of graduating more than 20 students at the prograduate level as co-supervisors. I have also included them as aspects of my contribution because I am very convinced. These are partners with me in our drive to ensure that the plant pathogen doesn't win. They are working in different areas of life and their, their accomplishments in life is giving me a fulfillment that my job is worthwhile and more than my monthly pay. I will conclude by saying that the panacea to plant afflictions lie within the plant and the surroundings. And that plant-based resources and ecosystem management practices have been verified to protect plants from the fungal diseases. And these are my recommendations. I wish to recommend that there are a number of research findings on the efficacy of different plant products and environment-friendly practices in the management of fungi-induced diseases and tropical diseases. These findings require to be harnessed into a compendium for easy reference in order to avoid duplication of efforts. Secondly, plant products and environment-based protection practices should be given more emphasis by researchers and policymakers as a way of reducing the cost of crop production. Indeed, the time is due for a plant protection policy in Nigeria. I also recommend that there should be increased attention and fund allocation to research in the use of plant and environment-based strategies in plant disease management, and that the Federal Universities of Agriculture and the National Agricultural Research Institutes in Nigeria should be further strengthened and funded to contribute more to plant protection in Nigeria. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir, please permit me to acknowledge a wide array of individuals that have contributed to the making of me. And I want to start by thanking the Almighty God, the maker of the heaven and the earth, for my birth, my rebirth, and the grace to stand before you this afternoon to present this inaugural lecture. And I dare declare that to him be all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. I also want to thank my parents. I pay tribute to the memory of my late father, Robert Adedru Enikwome. My father was committed to bringing up my siblings and I in the best manner possible. He was an advocate of good education. And that was why, as a secondary school teacher, he could send me to Mayflower Junior School in 1975. And he went through all of this with my siblings and I. Interestingly, all through my studies, I never enjoyed scholarship. I was trained from primary to PhD by my father. And he had this same commitment for all of us. And I want to thank God for his life because as I stand before you today, to the glory of God and as a payback for his efforts, accruable to his name, are two professors. One high court judge, a chartered accountant, and two, new, two senior civil servants amongst others. I also want to thank God for my mother who by the grace of God is still alive but is unable to attend physically. I dare say it was in the home front. I knew the value of a, a, a closely knitted family system. And I give thanks to God for being their children. I also want to thank the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta, for providing me with the opportunity and avenues to become who I am today.
And I'll seek your indulgence, acting vice chancellor, sir, to personalize this to the vice chancellors of this university who labor day and night to ensure that this place remains the beacon of our fatherland. I would like to thank you, sir, Acting Vice Chancellor, for your efforts at ensuring that we have a system to work in. And I pray that the Lord will grant it to you to do this successfully and be able to raise your head, head, head high in Jesus' name. I also want to thank the former Vice Chancellors of this university for their services to this university. Because I came in as early as 1994, I have had the privilege of working under all the vice chancellors. And therefore, I want to thank Professor Nimbe Adedipe, the pioneer vice chancellor, acknowledge these contributions of other vice chancellors, namely Emeritus Professor Gio Koje. I pray tribute to the memory of Professor I.F. Adu and acknowledge the service of Professor Aya Damsing, Professor Olufemi Balogun, Professor Luo Oyewale Bandele, and the immediate past vice chancellor, Professor Felix Falaole Salako. I also want to thank the current principal officers of this university. The same ladies and gentlemen, permit me to do it this way, because I have had a stint and I know how the shoe pinches. So permit me to acknowledge their services on your behalf and thank the current principal officers, Professor C.O.N. Nikobi, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic. Thank you. Dr. Bola Adekola Registrar, Mr. Chukunwike Ezekweazu, and Professor Mrs. Pentola Anifade, thank you for your commitments to this university. I also want to thank them because I, I have a personal relationship with all of them. And it has been an exciting experience being their friends. Thank you very much. And in the same vein, I want to acknowledge the commitments and services of former deputy vice chancellors of this university. Professor Tio Tayo, Professor Oyarufi Sholari, Professor Sto Lagoke, OJ Ario, IC Eromo Sele, Tio Arolu, CFI Onwuka, Professor Mrs. O Eromo Sele, Professor Wai Dadekojo, Professor Mrs. M. D. Peolu, Professor L. O. Sonny, Professor C. O. Adeofo, and Professor Mrs. Bola Akilindo Akiridulu Ali. I also want to acknowledge the services of, of other principal officers, former principal officers of this university, Dr. T.M. Salisu, Dr. A. Agbola, and Dr. Mrs. M. Salam as former librarians of this university. I also acknowledge the commitments and service of former Babisi Soboyejo, Mr. Ademola Oyeride, Mrs. C. I. Kuforiji, Dr. M. Ayola and Dr. Mizello Uwoka, former registrars, and I pay tribute to the memories of Mr. Leke Adeboye, late Mr. Leke Adeboye, and late Mr. Femi Ogini. I also want to acknowledge the services of Mr. M. Ilesomi and pay tribute to the memory of Mr. Ajayi and late Mr. Osami Lui, former bosses of this university. I also want to acknowledge specially and thank Dr. M. O. Ayola and Mr. M. O. Ilesomi, with whom I served as principal officers when I was Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development. I bring this to four because we had our differences when it comes to a number of official positions, but they held maturity in high esteem such that those differences never interfered with our personal relationships. I want to thank you for giving me a learning curve in that regard. And I thank you for taking the pain to be here this afternoon. Thank you very much. I have been part of Senate and congregation of this university. And I have come to realize that I have learned a lot by being a member of Senate, a member of congregation. And therefore, I want to thank Senate and congregation of this university for the opportunity I've been given to learn and to serve. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. Permit me to thank my teachers and mentors. I want to start from the University of Ibado and thank Emeritus Professor Tunde Ikotu, my PhD supervisor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the honor of your presence this afternoon. Professor Ikotu accepted to take me up as a PhD student when I became orphaned because less than a year into my PhD program, 
justifiably and understandably, my supervisor had to go on sabbatical leave in Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe became rosy that he told me to leave of absence. And I became ruderless in the department. And Professor Ekotu accepted to add me to his long list of PhD students and had always been there for me. I want to thank you, sir. I hope that my accomplishments over the years has been a sense of pride to you. Thank you very much, sir. I also want to thank Professor F.K. Witte, who went beyond just being my mentor and lecturer to being a father figure to me. Thank you very much, sir. And I want to thank Professor B. Fawale and Professor G.I. Achiri. I pay tribute to the memory of Professor E.J. Eko, my master's degree supervisor. Here in the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta, I have individuals that I want to acknowledge as mentors. Again, permit me to emphasize the place of Professor Tio Tayo. For us in Copeland, it can never be an overstatement to chronicle the place of Professor Timothy Oluo Timitayo. But for the fact that he will be, but for the fact that he will feel uncomfortable, I will have said our iconic and legendary Professor Tayo. Thank you very much, sir. It was Professor Tayo that invited me to this university and gave me the first experience at being an academic. We learned the business of being a lecturer, being a researcher from Professor Tayo. And if you hear us talk about the Copeland culture, it's an indirect reference to Professor Tayo. Thank you for your mentorship over time. And thank you for the honor of your presence this afternoon, sir. I also want to thank Professor T.A.O. Ladende, M.T. Adetunji, O.J. Ario, F.O. Lasoton, C.F. Mafiana, M.S. Ayodele, T.O. Espokola, G.O. Latunde, F.O. Bamiro, Professor Steve and Professor Mrs. Carolina Folami. I also thank Professor C.F.I. Unwuka, I.C. Romo Sele, I.O.O. Ayelagbe, G.J. Bodunde, who begged me not to expose that he was my consultant for inaugural lecture. Professor S.O. Luwalano, Professor Mrs. Henshaw, Emeritus Professor Ayoka Ademambo, and many others. I pray tribute at this point to the memories of Professor P.O. Kuneye, A.Y.E. Adeoti, K.E. Ukeleye, and K.E. Elemo. I had the rare privilege of being an acting vice chancellor of this university. And it was an experience that I treasure and for which I also had a debt of gratitude to God and to the entire FUNAB community. I wish to just crystallize my appreciation to the FUNAB community through these individuals. I wish to thank the Chancellor of the University, His Royal Eminence, Edidem Oko, Epo Okon Abasu to the fifth, the Obong of Calabar, the Chancellor of the University, for whom I had the privilege to facilitate his investiture as chancellor. I also want to thank the governing council under the leadership of Barista Dr. Aboki Zawa. I also want to acknowledge all staff unions, ASU, SANU, NASU, and NAT, for the cooperation that was brought to bear and ensuring that our system survived. I also want to thank the principal officers that I was privileged to have. I dare say the uniqueness of the team is obvious on the screen. I, I won't say more than that. But I'm very sure you will see from this perspective I expect. I want to thank Professor Mrs. C.O. Eromo Sele, Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic then. I want to acknowledge the services and appreciate Dr. L. Onwuka, who was the acting registrar. I also want to thank Dr. Mrs. Mulikat Salam, who was our mother in the team for her maturity and wise counsel. And I want to acknowledge the services and thank Mrs. Suo Yewumi, who was the acting boss. It was a pleasant experience for which I am grateful to God, and indeed grateful to the entire university community. I once had the privilege too to be dean of postgraduate school. And I considered it an obligation to acknowledge 
the services of everybody that was part of the PG program between August 1, 2012 and January 6, 2016. And permit me to personalize out my gratitude to Professor Wilfred Alekbeleye and Dr. Adebayo Shitu, who were my deputy deans in the PG school, and Mr. Omonwo Agbotoba, who was the secretary of the PG school. Thank you for your commitments to our service to the PG school at that time. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. Eight years into my tenure in this university, I got elected as shared person, as you know. This is important to me because this was my baptism into leadership. It gave me the privilege to learn union principles, strategies, and manners of doing things. And I would dare say that the lessons learned as chairperson ASU helped me all through the stages of my service in this university. I want to personalize my gratitude to individuals that were critical to my existence then, both as a follower and as a leader. Because before I became chairman, I was co-opted to be mentored by the likes of the then Dr. Biodo Nilude, who was the zonal coordinator and whom we call the GOC of Ibadan Zone. Our legendary Kayo Bebangoshe, Dr. Gio Olatunde, and late Dr. Bodesho Kweju, who took it upon themselves to mentor the likes of Dr. Elo Sonny, myself, Dr. Wale Dikpaolu, Dr. Mrs. Dikpaolu, Dr. Mrs. Akere Doluale, Comrade Ojia Fonwagu, Dr. A.A.A. Agbola, Comrade A.A.L.A. Shotuyo, and Dr. S.O. Samwobo, who also were members of my executive. I thank you all for the honor of working with you and the lessons we learned trying to contribute the best we could to this system. From this slide, you could see what time can do to us. Because I had the privilege of having been a chairperson, I also feel it duty bound to acknowledge individuals that had been on the driving seat of ASU for now, or ASU you now, brother, because I know how it pinches. And it's in this regard, I want to pay tribute to the memory of Dr. J.O. Shokweju and acknowledge Dr. G.O. Olatude. I have decided to present their titles as it was then in order not to lose the import of history. Dr. G.O. Olatunde. Dr. O. Bangboshe, Comrade OGF Nwogu, Comrade A. L. A. Shotuyo, Dr. A. 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 Agbola, Dr. O. S. Showande, Dr. B. S. Badmos, Dr. F. I. Adeoshun, Dr. A. O. Oni, and the current chairperson, Dr. O. Adeleye. Thank you for your services to this university. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. It will not be fair for me to just go through this part of this lecture without making a statement about the issues relating to our strike. I wish to acknowledge that academic staff members are critical players in the university system. And therefore, ASU could not have been working against itself. And therefore, government's attitude in respect of seeing us who are the enemy of the university cannot be sustained. And that's why I want to join my voice to asking government to pay our outstanding salaries. If I'll be permitted to go a little further, withholding the salary of lecturers and university staff for going on strike, is akin to a village head that decides to take a 75 year old man to the market square, strips him naked, and decides to give him 12 strokes of cane for a perceived offense. Perceived offense because the conduct is perceived to be an offense by the village chief. And because of that, he had gone through that process. At the end of the scene, it's likely that the community will not be a better place. The moral structure and foundation of that society will have been destroyed. 
and the capacity of the village head to lead will have become questionable. And that's why the issues should be resolved in a manner that will restore the dignity of lecturers so that they can stand before their students and continue to deliver. I consider that this is a way out of the crisis. I am from the College of Plant Science and Crop Production. And I want to thank everyone that had been part of my life in this college, except that people will feel we are emphasizing this too much. I will refrain from talking about Professor Tayo again. But the screen is talking about him. He's still there, even in retirement. Thank you all for being part of my life. It's been a nice place to be. And thank you for contributions over the years. I belong to the Department of Crop Protection. I want to thank everybody in the department. The limitations of time and space will not permit me to list everybody, but I want to thank you for creating an enabling environment for me to, environment for me to thrive in the department. And I want to thank Professor Eso Afolami, who we consider the father of the department even in retirement. Thank you for giving us examples of how to be an academic. Thank you very much, sir. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. I want to thank friends that I consider friends from the starting block. And I will seek your indulgence to allow me to pretend as if I'm not talking about you. I want to thank Professor and Mrs. Kende. I met Dr. Kende then in 1993 in the University of Ibado. And when I came to resume here in 1994, it was Dr. Kane Day who gave me the mattress I slept on for the first time. His mother would always ask him to go and invite me for dinner because I was a bachelor and I was new in town. And he has always been a friend. Thank you very much, sir. I also want to acknowledge the friendship of the then doctor and Mrs. M. O. Atayeshe, now Professor and Dr. Mrs. M. O. Atayeshe. We call him Murphy. Thank you, Murphy, for being my friend. And thank you for bearing with over these ages. My regards to the family and appreciation for your contributions to my life. And I also want to thank Professor Tunde Idowu and his wife, Professor Mrs. Idowu. A unique thing about Professor Idowu, who then was Dr. Idowu, was that because I was a bachelor, and he was married, and I had just given my life to Christ, he was inviting me every day to dinner. And of course, the dinner cooked by a married woman will be different from that of a bachelor. And each time I finish the meal and I express appreciation and, and gratitude, he will tell me it is like that because he's married. A subtle way of asking me to get married. And I didn't disappoint him. I got married not too long. I want to thank you, Professor Idowu, for your commitments to my life over those years, and even till date. I want to thank my research collaborators, Professor V.I. Olowe, who introduced me to the system crop. I had continued to foster my interest even in the production of the crop till date. I'm very grateful. I acknowledge the commitments of Professor Bam Kole of all you are going with to my research efforts and to Dr. C.J. Afolabi, my acting HOD, for her commitments to my research effort over the years. I have a long list of people to whom I'm indebted on this campus. Time will not permit me to list everyone, but I want to thank you all. Thank you for your commitments to me. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you're doing, the goodwill, the prayers. I know the Lord will pay you back. I can't do it enough. God bless you all. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir. Again, permit me to thank someone I consider my boss on the job. I want to thank Professor Lushola Bandelo Yewale, the former Vice Chancellor of this university, and the Secretary General of Association of African Universities, and his wife, Mrs. Bolanle Yewale. Professor Yewale, it was that nominated me twice to Senate. First, as Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, and secondly, as Acting Vice Chancellor. 
As Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, Professor Yeole gave me ample opportunity to learn. And as his successor, Professor Yeole never one day attempted to influence my decisions. I look back now and I see that as a critical element in my efforts to stabilize the system. And I want to thank God for his life and thank him for those ways of handling things. And of course, to join him to thank God for his being, that he was vindicated by the justice system in Nigeria and honored by his recent appointment in AAU. In 2017, I was honored with the fellowship of the Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, having been the editor-in-chief for more than five years. And I want to seize the opportunity to thank this society through the chairman of the DOT, Professor D.B. Olufolaji, and the current president of the society, Professor J.J. Antungu, who is my dean, and Professor Mrs. Kumi Alabi, the immediate past president. I want to thank these two people whom I consider my buddhists. They found a place here because there are two friends that can look at me in the eyes all the time and tell me I am wrong. And I have known them since the early 90s. I want to thank Professor Femi Pito and his wife and Professor Bala Oshipito. You notice that there's something common about them. Maybe that's what made them my friends. I live here in Obanto, Kwabe Okuta, an environment I have over the years come to realize is a quiet place and a congenial environment to live in. So I want to thank my neighbors for creating an environment for me to live in. Please permit that I won't have time to mention everybody's names, but thank you for all you're doing to make me comfortable. During my postgraduate days, I had friends that worked with me, played with me, encouraged me, I paid tribute to the efforts they made to making me who I am. Everyone is now almost a professor, and I thank God for the lives of each and every one of us. In my undergraduate days, I had a crop of friends that made it easy for a village boy that had just moved out of Okitipupa into the heart of Bender State then to integrate and rise within a short time. I thank you all for your commitments to my development those days and the challenges I faced that made me to be able to come out tops in class. If you have good friends, you'll be inspired to do more. And I thank God for your lives. Please permit that time will not permit me to list your names. I want to thank my childhood friends. And particularly, I want to thank Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Jida Yenumelo, Barisa James Tomomewo, Professor Olukoya Ogen, and late Oluye Olayemi Ogunwemi, who introduced me to my wife, Mr. and Dr. Mrs. Mr. and Dr. Mrs. Ayuarojulu of this university, Barisa Shegmaro Yele, Mrs. Nesi Olokunwemi, Wale Aki Sheloin, Boduni Ogumba Menu, Shegori to Mishe, Benga Kimoju, Femi Akinusi, and many others. I can't have time to mention here. I also want to spare time to thank individuals I consider senior friends in my life. Professor Gio Olatunde, the immediate past vice chancellor of all you are going with. Professor and Professor Mrs. Ademola Tayo, the vice, the vice the president and vice chancellor of Bangkok University. Dr. and Dr. Mrs. Kule Ariba, Dr. and Professor Mrs. Eniolonda, Dr. and Mrs. Ajayi, the former provost of FC Oshiele, Dr. and Mrs. Olushola Akinwande, an engineer, and Mrs. Biodun Fijabi. Thank you for your commitments to my life. I am a born again Christian, and my spiritual life has been accentuated by the fact that I belong to a church that has helped my spiritual life. And I want to seize the opportunity to thank God for our foundation church, Abel Kuta. And I will seek the indulgence of the acting vice chancellor to thank Pastor and Reverend Mrs. Tundea Musum, who I'm very sure is comfortable, is uncomfortable with this. Thank you, sir. And I also want to thank you for giving me the privilege to preach the word of God. Thank you. And to all members of our foundation church, it is impossible to mention your names here, but I'm sure of one thing, Jesus reckons with your labor and he will reward. God bless you. 
for my extended family members, Mr. and Mrs. Emmanuel Legboto, thank you for your commitments to my life. Mr. and Mrs. Victor Dole, thank you for what you've been doing and what you're still doing. Mr. and Mrs. Biodun Chochila de Gumoye, Mr. and Mrs. Dendia Robadi, Dr. and Mrs. S. Wakinleye, Horticulturist Tai Wakimbi of FCE, Prince Yewa Ademeso, Pastor and Peace, Pastor Mrs. Joshua Adebol Abolade, thank you for your commitments to my life, your prayers and goodwill. I know God will reward you all for your commitments to my life in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank my in-laws who gave my wife to me. I pray tribute to the memory of Le Pa Benjamin Olatui. I thank God for Mama Rachel Olatui, who by the grace of God is alive today. And I'm very sure he's sitting by my mom now listening to this lecture. I also extend this to my sisters and brothers-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. Taiwo Olatui, Professor Kunle Olatui. And I want to thank Tenny Olatui and the sister Deborah. You will notice that my wife is a Dowu, and so there must be a Taiwan Kende before her. The Taiwo is late, but the children are the ones here, Teniola and Deborah. I thank you all for giving my children a background to work with. Teniola and Deborah were there for my kids to grow with, and I thank you for your commitments to good life, work ethics, good conduct that my children have been able to follow after. I want to thank my brothers. I want to thank Prince and Mrs. Johnson and Nick Woman, who is the head of the family now. Thank you for taking the train to come for all the way from Akure. Thank you very much, sir. I want to pay tribute to the memory of Dr. Akia Nick Woman, who has gone to be with the Lord. I want to thank Prince Shegwe and Nick Woman and Prince Olalekon and Nick Woman for all your efforts to my life, the warmth of being your brother, and all your efforts towards me. And my family. Acting Vice Chancellor, sir, please permit me to acknowledge my mother's children. I want to thank my elder sister, Princess Olufunke Adewumi, and the husband, Honorable Tolu Adewumi, for all your efforts towards me. We call her Auntie Funke. She's working hard to fill in the space when the time comes as a matrach of the household. And I know the Lord will grant that to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for everything you're doing. After her, is Prince Simbo, Enikwome, and his wife. Thank you, my brother. I am next to him. And he bears the brunt of our resemblance because sometimes people mistake us for one another. But I guess age is starting to show that we are not the same set of people. Thank you for everything. Thank you for taking the plane to be here. God bless you, my brother. After Simbo is myself, and after me is Honorable Justice Ademola Enikwome and his wife, Dr. Mrs. Adenika Enikwome. Ademola, thank you for everything. Thank you. Possibly if Ademola had not been who he is, I wouldn't be standing here to give an inaugural lecture. The reason is that when I finished my master's degree in 1990, I went home and told my father that my professor said, oh, you'll be a good PhD student, come over, you did so well. And everybody said, go back for PhD. But I said, I wanted to work and earn some money. And for two weeks, everybody was persuading me to go back to do PhD that I, was, I had claimed I was good at. And then he woke up one day and came and said, don't mind him, he's afraid of PhD. I said, why? He said, if you claim to be good at it, why are you refusing to go? You are hiding your fear of PhD under the guise of wanting to work. I said, eh? I said, okay, bet here. Yeah. And the younger one between us came, you know the bet now, somebody came and caught it. The next day I came back to you and thank you, my brother. God bless you. After him, in the row, is Prince Ademiju Enikwome and his wife, Ileola. Prince Ademiju had taken the brunt of staying back at home on the behalf of the rest of us. His choice to work at home and fill the gap for us had made it easier for those of us in the diaspora to stay there at peace. I want to thank you, my brother, for all your commitments. Thank you for your understanding, and I know the Lord will continue to increase you in Jesus' name. 
And after him is my kid brother, Professor Tony Anikwome, and the wife, Deborah. Tony is of the Lagos State University. Tony had been an influence in my life to a point that when I earned my PhD, he was just about 20 years old. And I dedicated the PhD to him. That shows the impact he had been making on my life even as a young boy who was so far behind me. And today, I thank God for your life. Thank God for attaining the status of a professor. And I came to realize that now, if you want to search for Professor Enikwome, you must get the details right, even as close as the initials. If you want to search for me, make sure it is OA. If you put AO, you'll be looking for somebody else. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for all your efforts. Active Vice Chancellor, sir. Do I have your permission to carry on? I want to acknowledge my wife. Sometime in December 1991, a friend walked up to me, that friend that is late now, and said, I found a lady over the week who I just know is the best, the best wife material for you. Not for me, oh, but you. And of course, youthfulness, I followed him, not knowing that I was walking into my future. Eight years later, she became Mrs. Seniko May. And we have been living together. I have warned myself that this is an academic environment and I must watch my utterances to be sure that I don't become romantic on stage. And therefore, I will reserve the rest for the other room. But I want to thank you, ma'am. And like I've always said, your labor in the secret will be rewarded in the public in Jesus' name. Along with her, God has granted me the grace of three wonderful children. Dr. James Moronfolu Enikwome, Ms. Favor Inyuade Enikwome, and Mr. Reward Adeolua Enikwome. I want to thank you guys for making parenting a pleasant experience for me and your mother. And I have always told you, you are a child of the righteous. You have a heritage with the Lord and great is your peace in Jesus name. Thank you for the privilege that I have to be your father. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is my inaugural lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Please, you can have your seats. You can have your seat. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful one. And please, another round of applause for the 71st inaugural lecturer, Professor Ololade Adeduro Enikwome.
Thank you. All the same. From the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, this award of honor is presented to Professor Ololadi Adeduro Enikwomei as the 71st inaugural lecturer of the university. Dated this day, Wednesday, 23rd November, 2022. Congratulations. Well, also on behalf of the university, something you are used to, but all the same, we want you to give this to the family from the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. Congratulations. Well, very briefly, we also have a presentation from the Department of Crop Protection. Can you please quickly come forward from the Department of Crop Protection? Being the first inaugural lecturer from that department, congratulations. The Acting Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to stand on the existing protocol I'm making this presentation on behalf of the Department of Crop Protection, FUNAP, in standing ovation. So, so I'm presenting this to you, Professor O.A. and Iku Omehi, on this red letter day of your presentation of the seventh, the first inaugural lecture of this great university and the very first from the Department of Crop Protection. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Department of Crop Protection. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Yes. It's been a long day. And I want to crave your indulgence to stand on the already established long appreciation of the inaugural lecturer. I have here appreciation from this university for the Enikume family. And my brother has actually done a lot of that. So to the Enikume family, we congratulate you and we welcome you to our university. Also to the distinguished ladies and gentlemen who have great this occasion, please we want to acknowledge you and really thank you very much for coming. But please just permit me to ask that one person should please stand up for due recognition. His name has been mentioned earlier but I will also want to welcome him specially. And that is Emeritus Professor Tunde Ikotun. Oga, please stand up. He's my mentor. He trained us all at the University of Ibadan. Emeritus Professor Tunde Ikotun. Thank you so very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. So on that note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the 71st inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta. God bless you all for coming. We appreciate you. So we want to appreciate you. The high table will lead and we will all go out. Please, for those who are in the academic um, procession, you will go through this side because there's something for you. I know also that the family members will also join us. Students, great Funabites. Adequate provision day for you. So please just go towards that side. There's provision for you. Okay. And, and on that basis, I would like to call on the inaugural lecturer. He has something to tell us concerning the provisions that have been made. Thank you very much, sir. For the refreshments, we will kindly request that aside people in procession who will go through here, all family members should go through this rear exit at the back of the stage. 
All invited guests should go through the exit where that man is. Please, the security man in yellow, that exit point, all invited guests, please go through there. While family members will go through the exit at the back of the stage here. And all other members of staff should please remain seated. You will be served right at your seat while the students should remain where they are in the foyer. Your refreshments will also be brought there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. For those in academic procession, we go out in reverse order. The, face, the acting face A, followed by the inaugural lecturer, these are directors, HODs, professors, and others. Thank you. Thank you so much, the chairman, ceremonial committee, Professor Akinjide Akinlabi. Well, we are drawing the curtain of the 71st inaugural lecture of our university. Right now, we take the anthems also in reverse uh, order. Starting first with FUNAB anthem, then thereafter, the national anthem. FUNAB anthem. Thanks for gracing the 71st inaugural lecture of our university. Please, let's follow the announcement directive, uh, particularly in respect to procession. Thank you, uh, the acting vice chancellor, Professor Borushola Babatunde, uh, Ken Inde for coming. I uh, will thank you, our inaugural lecturer, uh, Professor Ololade Adedu Renikumei, the DVCA, Professor Kristen Nikiobi, the registrar, Dr. Bola Adekola, the bossa, Mr. Tukumike Zekpiasu, the University Liberian, Dr. Fentolo Nivade, 
Of course, the chairman called out Professor Adebayo for you, Akiloye. Of course, the dean of 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 of, of, of Clopant, Professor Joe Atugu. We thank you all, our guests, uh, the former registrar, uh, Mr. Yola, we thank you. Uh, the former university librarian, Dr. Miss, Mrs. Monica 